9.20 p.m., the first indication of the horror being unleashed that night. A suicide bomber exploding his vest outside France's National Soccer Stadium. There was a second detonation, another suicide bomb. Both attackers, it seems, had been stopped before they could get in. The French president had been watching and left after the first explosion, but the game continued even as rumors of what was happening outside spread through the crowd. A third attacker would blow himself up outside a nearby McDonald's. Far worse, though, was still to come. Around 9.25, gunmen with Kalashnikov-type assault weapons targeted diners at a string of restaurants. First at Le Carillon and Le Petit Cambodge, 15 people were killed. The gunman raced away in a black car. Next, the Café Bombier was hit. Five people were killed. At 9.36, at La Belle Equipe, sheer terror, the same black car, the crowded terrace sprayed with gunfire. Witnesses say it went on and on. 19 people died here. Nine others were critically injured. At least four restaurants and bars were hit in just a matter of minutes. The epicenter of the attack, though, would be the Bataclan, a concert venue. As the band Eagles of Death Metal played, gunmen rushed the hall and opened fire. Those who escaped, the survivors, called it a massacre, a mass execution. Eighty-nine people were killed. South African Isabel Bowdery survived by pretending to be dead. On Facebook, she wrote this. As I lay down in the blood of strangers and waiting for my bullet to end my mere 22 years, I envisioned every face that I have ever loved and whispered, I love you, over and over again, reflecting on the highlights of my life, wishing that those I love knew just how much, wishing that they knew that no matter what happened to me, to keep believing in the good in people, to not let those men win.